Emmy winner for best newscast. Now I try to stay low key as possible, and I'm still Nate from Cape Coral. Like I don't, I being playing football in the NFL hasn't changed me. The media shy NFL football star Nate Allen has been forced into the spotlight in the worst possible way. Accusations of indecent exposure to a 16 year old girl has garnered national headlines. Tonight, his family and attorney come forward showing evidence they say proves his innocence. Good evening, I'm Warren Wright. You're watching Fox 4 News at 10. Nate Allen's attorney says he's ready to show the world a timeline that proves Nate Allen couldn't have done what he's accused of. Supported by his church and surrounded by his family, Nate Allen is standing tall against accusations of indecent exposure to a minor. The event allegedly happened last week in his F-250 truck near the intersection of U.S. 41 and Colonial. Nate's mother calls this whole experience a never-ending nightmare. It really didn't hit me until like the third day because I wanted this to hurry up and be over and it wasn't over. So I felt like I was grieving for my son. But Allen's attorney, Sawyer Smith, says the grieving can stop. When you have national attention brought to your city, it's a wonderful thing. Unless it's the police falsely arresting people. Smith says he has turned over every stone and can state without hesitation, Nate Allen is innocent. What we learned was that a phone call was made to FMPD at 4.54 p.m that alleged a man was masturbating in a vehicle. Smith says he can account for every moment of Nate Allen's whereabouts leading up to that phone call. At 4 p.m., he went to eat at Red Lobster, a place he worked at as a kid and considers one of his favorite restaurants. His credit card receipts show him paying at 447. He chatted with Vanessa Sturgis, a cook at Red Lobster. She posted this picture at 453 on Facebook saying, me and Nate Allen love this guy, so respectful. Also at 4.53, Nate texts his mother as he's leaving Red Lobster. Quote, just ate at Red Lobster, came from the orthodontist. They said my retainer looked good. And at 4.54, the same time the 911 call was made, Nate was calling his best friend Robert Padilla. Phone records and a sworn affidavit show their conversation was nothing out of the ordinary until Nate was pulled over by the police and was forced to hang up. He was told to get out of his car and he was surrounded by cop cars with the alleged witness inside one of them. The 16 year old girl, don't know what she looks like, was in the back of the cop car and I was being told just to stand there and I'm in cuffs at this time. I'm in cuffs and I'm being told right on the side of Colonial and I'm being told to stand there. Forced to stay in a jail cell for four and a half hours, he's confident he won't be going back. But he adds he's worried for other young men like himself. Thank the Lord that I have the resources and the support from high places and that I'm able to afford these resources because let something happen like this to somebody else that can't, they might really end up in prison. Okay, Nate Allen says he doesn't understand why the girl identified him as someone who committing an obscene act, but Allen's attorney says the Fort Myers Police Department made some serious errors, violating Nate Allen's civil rights. The act for which Mr. Allen was accused is a misdemeanor. It's called indecent exposure. And in Florida, a misdemeanor like that, that happens outside the presence of law enforcement, is a non-arrestable offense. When Nate Allen was pulled over on Colonial Boulevard last week, he says he was shocked when police told him he had, quote, made a pass at a 16-year-old girl. Someone was sitting in a car that I was told that identified me. So I have to ask you, I mean, my job's not to exonerate you or, or right. defend you, but how could they see all the way up here? I don't know. I don't know. That's why. It's impossible. The whole experience was humiliating when he says he was forced to stand handcuffed along the side of the road while a teenager ID'd him. I'm like begging. I'm like, please, can somebody tell me what is going on? Smith says such protocol is questionable. A 16-year-old girl automatically has trust in law enforcement. She's supposed to. We are supposed to teach our children to trust law enforcement. So when they show her a man in handcuffs standing next to a cop car, her natural inclination is to identify him as the person she saw. It is unfair for Fort Myers Police Department to do what they've done to Mr. Allen and his family. It's equally unfair to do to this, this young lady. Okay, I reached out to the Fort Myers Police Department this morning wanting to ask them about their procedures. They told me to contact the shift commander tomorrow morning. 
As of last week, FMPD said the case remains active and Allen has not been charged with a crime. Meanwhile, attorney Sawyer Smith says he has all the evidence he needs to clear Nate Allen of any wrongdoing. This information will be presented to local law enforcement, including the state attorney's office. Now, we want to know what you think. Do you think Nate Allen's family proved his case, stating his innocence? Give us a call at 206-FOX-4 or email us at news at fox4now.com and let us know what you think.